Turning overseas, and Russia has rejected a proposed truce over this weekend's Orthodox Christian Easter period, saying it would allow Ukrainian fighters time to arm themselves. Meanwhile, the United States has committed one billion US dollars in military aid to Ukraine to help repel Russian forces. We are now entering the third month of this conflict, with both sides sustaining heavy losses. Let's speak to retired Major General Mick Ryan once again. General Ryan, good morning to you. We're, uh, we're hearing, I guess, no great surprise uh, in terms of Russian war aims. We're hearing senior Russian military figures saying, yes, we want to establish a land bridge between Crimea in the south and the Donbass region in the east. Uh, is that now, do you think, not just their stated aim but also the extent of their ambitions? Does that mean that, well, the capital at least is safe? Yeah, well, good morning. I think the brief by the Russian deputy commander of their central military district really only uh, described what the Russians are doing right now. There was nothing new in that briefing about Russian operations in the east or in the south. Um, we shouldn't expect this is the absolute limit of Russian aspirations in Ukraine. I think President Putin has made that clear with multiple speeches, but it does represent their goals for the current offensive. General, we saw during the week one of those sort of slightly awkward uh, briefings for the cameras where, where uh, President Putin was instructing a senior defence official, well, here's what I want you to do in Mariupol. I want you to leave those steelworks behind. We'll just, we'll just, uh, we'll just choke them off. We'll, we'll now turn our attention elsewhere. Uh, in terms of that strategy, is there, is there a good military reason to, to leave that last pocket of resistance in Mariupol and to move on? Yeah, it was a pretty awkward picture and I'd say it was a pretty awkward meeting for the Defence Minister who's failed to deliver for his president. I think what uh, President Putin has realised belatedly is that Mariupol is providing such resistance it will continue to absorb and destroy Russian forces. He wants to cauterise what he sees as a wound for the Russian army so he can redeploy a large proportion, not all, but a large proportion of the forces involved with Mariupol to the offensive in the east. He needs every battalion tactical group he can get there. There were reports this week that the battle for the east was underway. We're not hearing that much from, from the ground. What are you expecting to unfold there? And to what extent is this going to be a different style of conflict to the, uh, to the, the columns of tanks that we've seen? In many cases, they've been blocked and the, the aerial uh, and missile bombardments of big cities. Well, in many respects, it's still too early to tell. And as we in the military know, first reports are always wrong from these kind of things. But what we are seeing is uh, preparatory artillery and rocket barrages from the Russians probing attacks to see where the Ukrainian defences might be weak. The Russians continue to build up forces in the east. And I expect in the coming days we may see a more significant offensive manifest in this area. And it will play out over some time. The ground in the east is different to the north. Uh, at least there is the potential for a more open form of manoeuvre that we did not see in the Russian loss in the Battle of Kiev. General, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson overnight our time saying that this conflict in Ukraine could continue until the end of next year. And he also warned that Vladimir Putin's forces could still have a victory not just a limited one, necessarily. Uh, what do you think would be the, I guess, the, the precursors to that extended conflict? Does that really depend on, for instance, Western nations continuing their level of military support to Ukraine? Well, I think the comments by um, the PM, British PM overnight represent uh, two possible outcomes. Uh, our wars are never predetermined as... Uh, Vladimir Putin found when he launched this thing, both sides get a vote here. So it could potentially drag on, not just into next year, but for years possibly. That is one potential outcome. But we should be certain that if the West doesn't continue to support Ukraine, the Russians have a much greater chance of rolling over the country and installing a puppet regime. That, that question seems to be pretty crucial in terms of whether Russia achieves its, its objectives and having a pro-Russian Ukrainian regime. Uh, on that sort of diplomatic and political side of things, is there anything that the West can do to try and keep Ukraine 
on the side of, of, of the West? Well, I think the Ukrainian people have already said that they, they desire a democracy. They desire the opportunities to be a prosperous society like they see in Europe. So they've already made that choice. It's up to other Western and democratic nations across the world to ensure that a massive authoritarian regime doesn't extinguish a young democracy in Eastern Europe. General Ryan, always appreciate your insights and analysis. Thanks for joining us once again on News Breakfast. Thank you.